all those storms that are in the off, off Japan and in the Central North Pacific are all aiming energy right down towards the North Shore and just catching it with that Tetris mint. And with Hawaii, there's no continental shelf, so it, you know all that open ocean power is able to hit the islands intact. So no slowing down of those waves, no weakening of those waves. I mean, you've got a series of these outer reefs offshore, so outer log cabins being kind of the primary one, which helps to suck in any longer period energy, especially you know swell periods of 16 seconds or greater, really helps to suck in that energy. And as you start to see the, the transitioning swell directions and swell period, you can start to see those waves shift up and down the reef, whether it's you know focusing a pipe or focusing it off the wall or back door, whatever it happens to be. The other thing is the prevailing winds, which are trades, easterly trades, are offshore or side offshore for the majority of the breaks on the North Shore. So you've got large consistent surf, you have good local conditions, um, the result is, is quality surf pretty much all winter long. I'd say this is the best December in 15 years. You know, that, that December was just all time. It was an intense few weeks or even month. It was like just non-stop and they were just scooping off the reef and just straight trade winds right into the barrel and you had to like be on your toes. Guys were getting hurt, it was, it was no joke. Every day, it's one of those months where you're like, God, it's 10 feet again. 10 feet again, is there'd be so many second reef like cleanup sets, but in between there was like these perfect 10, 12 footers, and it was like, it was hard work. And you know, your cardio level that month just went skyrocketing. So to have that southeast wind um, combined with a 10 to 12 foot swell at pipe, to not only happen once, but three or four or five times is crazy on a North Shore. And so there is a lot of buzz, a lot of people talking about the best winter and you know, many, many years. Tori Meister's backdoor one is pretty epic. The best way is a backdoor, usually around the first reef. And I was kind of in between, and I so I just tried to paddle as hard as I could, and I remember like taking my bottom turn and looking up, and it was just so big. And I remember kind of looking at it for a second, and then it just kind of went white. It just spit really hard, and I couldn't really see what was going on. And, and then all of a sudden, I came out, and I was like, whoa. That was cool. <laughs> it's definitely going to be one of the memorable ones for me forever. You know, you never knew until the morning you woke up, that's how good the waves were. Jamie O'Brien's wave from the early morning session with his wetsuit on, it was incredible. Yeah, I remember that particular wave. It, it, I paddled out pretty early. I was like, you know, that was one of my first waves. And I remember dropping in going, oh my God, I'm deep. And I was just like, oh well, I'm just going to do the biggest pump I could. And I was like, there was no enjoying it. It was like, pedal to the metal, you gotta make this wave or you're gonna get smoked. And I remember getting to one stage and I was like, oh, this thing's gonna back breathe. And when I'm talking about back breathe, it's the opposite feeling of spit going forward. It sucks you back, so it actually starts slowing you down. And then like, and you're like, oh, when's it gonna stop? And it's like stinging your face and then it just starts spitting. And it just, next thing you know, you're going twice as fast than you were going in the beginning. And I saw one line and I just picked my line and I came out and I kind of claimed it hard. <laughs> I was just stoked, and that's what surfing's about. The swell that hit around the 20th and 21st uh, was really, really west. You know, I think there was energy all the way down to like 285, 290 degrees, you know, like that 8 at 17 uh, on the near shore buoys, and just sunny skies, light trades, which um, that's pretty rare. Reef wave was really big. I thought it was a really big pipe wave, and uh, the way he rode it was really, really cool. It was, it was long barrel and it was really big. And... That one came in, I knew I was deep, and I just went and threaded the needle, and that was it, pretty much. I went in, had a beer. And then obviously Kelly's wave was insane. I, I think the way he rode it, I don't think anyone else in the world could have done that. It was out of control, it was beyond, you know, human. Yeah, it was, it was right on the winter solstice on December 21st. Shortest day of the year, but probably the best day of the year for waves. Basically every single set had three plus good waves in it that were like, you know, at least six feet, maybe eight feet, and then up to 10 foot plus. But it was all shelving in the same spot every time, so you weren't playing that game like, do I go deep, do I go wide, where's it gonna be? It was like pretty much all just cornering right on the, on the boil. And um, I, I can't tell you how many guys I saw get crazy waves that day. Yeah. 
It's hard to not appreciate every single wave that was entered on December 21st. Almost every time you open an entry from that day, it just pops. You know, the waves were bright blue, it was just crystal offshore wind, it was just pristine. And that's when you see these waves light up. You catch pipeline, you know, 8 to 10, 12 foot, and perfect. It's, it's what surfing's made of, it's what you draw in your book at school, it's all that stuff. And, you know, December just had some pumping waves, man. Oh, the anticipation of big sets coming when you're sitting right where you want to sit. It's probably the best feeling in the whole world. I was in there, I was like, yeah, I got a chance. And I just held that rail as hard as I could. And it like, I just felt it spit and I felt my board lift up. It did like a full lift up. I felt it go sideways and do a little cuckoo, like catch. And then I like, got to ride out and I was just so happy. The end of December was, you know, good solid swell and just phenomenal wind conditions. And it's pretty special to get pipe to be that good on consecutive days is, is pretty rare. It makes not only the surfing good for Wave of the Winter, but when you have a wave that looks that crazy and thick with clean conditions, it makes it nice to look at. When I was like taking off, I finally looked down the line, I was already like barreling, and I was like, oh no, I'm way too late. And I knew I had to, couldn't go all the way to the bottom, so I had to knife it halfway up, and then lucky I got a good pump in. Usually those ones, go really flat and just pinch, but this one just bowled out really nice, so super lucky. For GoPro of the winter, guys like Kamale and Anthony and um, Stefan and Kalani, everybody helped push the level to where it's at. It was a perfect little backdoor day. I mean, little, I mean, it was like six feet, but. <laughs> I remember paddling in, I was real glassy, real clean, and I was looking at it like, oh, this, this is a perfect one, and I locked in, and I was in the barrel, and I was like, deep. January, there was a couple of good big swells, but there was some north wind. January was the worst January I've seen in my life. You know, I figure the good and then the bad. Like those December swells, like every set was good. January, you kind of really had to go out there and like needle in a haystack, like hunt it down, try find one. And there wasn't a lot, but there definitely was some entries. This wave popped up. It didn't seem to be that incredible. It kind of gave me a nice in. And next thing I knew, I was kind of like way behind the peak. So I really drew my bottom turn out and drove up into it. It was, it was a pretty wild experience when I was inside the barrel. It was like, it was just spitting and I couldn't see anything. And then when I came out, I was like pretty shocked actually. I thought that wave was phenomenal. I mean, I, I didn't really know who he was. And, you know, to see him um, commit to a wave like that and be as deep as he was. And, you know, basically come out after the spit. Um, I was really impressed. My muse are the hues of the night skies, fused with a bright face, young nieces holding hands and walking on my right hip lifetime. Journeys in the backyard, turning all in, all grins down the pipeline. pipeline. Serve it when I'm nervous, it's the same as when I'm confident, preferring on the curve, opposed to being on the upper deck, not quite. That pedestal can crack. You inspire me and I inspire you. just to watch the pure energy of, of the ocean. It was like intense just to even be on land. We saw, you know, some great days of surfing, but we saw much more of a typical, uh, you know, characteristics from the North Shore, where the wind got a little more rough, some huge swells, which sort of washed the sand around too much.
it scares me to death there is nothing here Comfort here, cause I know what is lost. Hope is always fear for pain and may cost. And I searched for a reason to go on. I tried and I've tried, but it's taking me so long. I might be better off closing my eyes. See myself, I love peaceful and fail, but underneath I can barely inhale.
Blu-ray, Anna Frio leads a flock of bare-boobed Brit babes in the look of love. Pinups expose us to swinging London. Forty-eight minutes in, Kristen gives us a glimpse of bare butt while getting banged on a sink, plus a splash of side boob at the fifty-seven with your dog, sir. Check out Angelina and not just about anything else is ever done. Whether it's a most drastic turn in jail or a Bouncing boobs in original sin, Angelina loves to be a sinner. The ladies get naked several times, and there's even a gleesome threesome. After 24 exposures,
Two and through most of February, there's a lot of rain on the North Shore. Um, the winds were kind of variable and just all over the place, but there were moments where hey, it would get pretty good if that door off the wall and, or, or pipe, and, and there were some, some big days too. Kelly Slater's wave during the Vulcan Pro to me was one of the one of the craziest waves I've seen ever at pipe. I mean, I think almost every single human on this planet would have just cannonballed and fell out of the sky. And somehow he just knifed it and got under the lip just in time. Meanwhile, with no hands. I mean, just a complete freak. Kelly Slater makes the drop. High barrel, yes! Wow. Obviously, Mother Nature is, is pretty unpredictable, and you know, the conditions really inevitably is the determining factor with this event. If you don't get those waves when it's, you know, when it's on, then you're obviously gonna miss out on the opportunity. And I think, you know, there, there was clearly a group of guys that were really committed and devoted to being out of pipe and back door and off the wall when it was on, because there was consistent entries from each of those days from, I would say a group of about 10 guys. Uh, consistently you saw whether it was a wave at pipe or it was a wave at back door or off the wall. They were consistently uh, in the mix. There was a ton of guys that didn't even make the top 10 uh, that were incredible and they had a handful of waves. Kieran Jabor, he had like three or four waves this year that were incredible. I thought Nat Young, he had one of the deepest barrels all year. You know, it wasn't the biggest wave, but it was so late and deep, came out way after the spit and that was early on in the season. Every year Reef's gonna be in the mix because he puts in so much time and he knows the wave so good and he charges and you know he just he just knows how to ride a barrel. He's not intimidated by pipeline. There's no entry that's like, oh my god, that's it. There's a lot of ones that are like, sheesh. We're gonna have to really freaking pick these apart. It was like mind-bending going through all the footage and trying to, you know, really split hairs between one ride and and another. I mean, really, I think this was a, a, a much harder year. Um, because there were so many similar rides, you really had to like slow it down and dissect how late was the takeoff, how deep, uh, you know, was the guy in the barrel, was he dragging, did he backdoor the section? I mean, I think we all felt like it was a little bit more difficult to really decipher because there were so many great entries. I mean, you can't just like whip through it and go, oh yeah, these are 10. And these guys are like kind of counting on you to, you know, choose the right ones. And so, you know, you're constantly juggling these rides and looking at them and going over them time and time again to try and, okay, you know, I got to come up with 10 for this month. There was at least, in my opinion, 30 to 40 amazing rides this winter. Um, and there really wasn't an extreme difference between them all. They were, you know, the winter was this much better. When the results came out, we were all pretty close. So I guess we're kind of all seeing the same thing. Woo! <laughs>
Bastard. Hey, you weren't expecting this one either. You were expecting that one? No! Why were the winners there? No way! You serious? Congrats. Oh, wow, little strike double here. What? Yeah. Oh, he surprised you. Oh, he's surprised you. Lovely Chrissy to present it to you. Thank you. No way! I was like. What the hell is going on here? Who are these people? <laughs> Wave the winner. That's such a surprise. Um, I knew I, I knew I had a couple good ones, but um, I spent a lot of time in the moment at Pipeline this year, and uh, it paid off. I, I definitely had my best year at Pipeline in many years, maybe ever. You know, I, I, I was able to probably get you know five or ten memorable waves. Yeah, I came in. It just was kind of feathering. A little bit on the second reef, not not quite on second reef, but kind of in between first and second, like standing up. I didn't really have a choice to grab the rail. I was kind of contorted trying to get under it. You know, I had to turn really quick, and uh, I pulled up. I was trying to figure out which line I was going to take, and uh, I saw the foam ball coming up to kind of hit me, and and I just I literally got ready to jump. I kind of put my weight up like this in the barrel. I remember kind of lifting up, going, "Okay, I'll jump and try to get away from my board as soon as it blasts me," but somehow it kind of lifted my tail up and pushed my board up into my feet and just threw me out of the barrel and, and uh, I was really surprised I made it, you know. To me that was that was um, definitely one of the best best uh, rides I've ever had a pipeline. It was probably touch and go for him yeah. coming out of that tube. And all of us went, yeah, <laughs> that one took a little extra to, to make. When we decided on Kelly Slater winning the wave of the winner, my instinct was like, okay, let's, Let's share the, the wealth a little bit and uh, maybe pass the performer of the year to someone else, but we just simply couldn't do it because you couldn't argue the fact that Kelly just absolutely dominated. Kelly was uh, just consistently on it. Um, you know, obviously winning the Pipe Masters, winning the Volcom event, you know, and, and, and then taking out the wave of the winner. But he has a knack for finding those waves and, and uh, reading them uh, better than anybody. And, uh, you know, it was, that was incredible to, to pull in and be that deep uh, backhand, not grabbing the rail, um, you know, is, is uh, just the ultimate testament of how skilled he is out there. You know, there's a long history of waves of the winter, so I think this event uh, is going to be around for a long time, and it means a lot to the surfers. Our sport continues to evolve, and you see guys surfing at a higher and higher level that, that you never thought was possible and, and I think you know, all of these guys that, that had entries into this year's event are, are sort of a, a part of that evolution of surfing, not just a pipeline but in general just pushing the boundaries of, of what's possible. And then boom, when we come out of the barrel, act like you're coming in and just whoo, Johnny boy hard kick out, boom, and then paddle right all the way back out, like through Pupakea, like so no one could talk to you, like you just got it to yourself, just like, uh-huh, wave of the winter, mother I'm still drunk from the night before. Oh, 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 oh. All these chicks will look like models once I finish off this bottle. Oh, I'm knocking at my door, but I'm still drunk from the night before. Now what the hell is going on? Who parked that car on the lawn? Oh well, at least we made it home. My bar receipts are my alarm, my wallet and my phone are gone. Looks like I got a ways to go. But so what? It doesn't matter cause I know that once I hit the ocean I'll be Shop this bottle. And the cops are knocking at my door, but I'm still drunk from the night before. 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 
Good morning. Are you excited? So excited. Look, we're starting. Good morning, temperature right now. I don't even think it's that hot. It's like 82 to the humidity is insane. It's like New York. It's like a jungle. Seriously, I want to know. Well... But you want to know? You taste so fucking good. Okay, I'm no less but with those really hot. Yeah? Mm hmm. You almost made me want to go down on you. Really? Almost. Did you know this is just cash? Right. Yeah, of course. Okay. Good, because I don't want you freaking out of me catching feelings and shit. Like, I'm not into girls. I just like my pussy licked. And you like to lick it. That's our dynamic, no more, no less. Like, I just want you to get it through your head right yeah, now. That's all. Understood. I no feelings whatsoever. Okay. Anyway, I'm not, I'm not gay either, you know, this is, it's fun. Okay, whatever, look, you don't have to hide the fact that you're gay, I don't care. I'm not. Look, you could do whatever you want, I just don't want you falling in love with me, that's all. I don't have patience for that type of bullshit, man or woman. Okay. Nikki, like, Tastes like. What? No. You ask, Nikki. Uh, I know, but I just. I just. I mean, like, I would just assume it's nasty. So. Why? You honestly want to know what you taste like? Well, I asked, didn't I?
I didn't know what else, but that was so fucking hot. Yeah? Yeah. I mean, it almost made me want to go down on you. Really? Almost. The specialness of in some woods which was so beautiful because you hear in the background birds chirping and then like a butterfly flying so it was very serene it makes you feel calm and very comfortable within your own body you focus more on the beauty of the picture and the intimacy sometimes you can see a vulnerability which I think that's very appealing and sexy such a beautiful location in Corsica. We have like beautiful beach, like a beautiful forest around. So today we did like a few pictures in the forest surrounded by bugs and mosquitoes. But I still <laughs> feeling really comfortable and I feel always beautiful, you know, when he's shooting me. This year, I think it's like a beauty of each girl inside, you know, like you more showing you're like um, sensual and really like relaxed and like beautiful. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
pictures in Pere Alejandro is gonna stay like for for history. You know, every picture is so unique. You know, it's like a perfect example of a woman. <laughs> We're in Corsica and it's really beautiful, full of mountains, a lot of green, fresh air. We're super high up and so you could see the sky. Mario Sorrenti is just being wonderful. He likes the girl very natural and just how we were born. <laughs> Super natural and no like hard poses or anything, just as more relaxed as possible. I really felt good and I think it helps a lot when there's just the photographer and the model. Just you and him and he's just looking to your eyes and your expressions and your body kind of floats with it, you know. I found very positive things about the word envy when I was wearing the underwear because you feel confident and you just like envy it because you want to emanate it. There is something always special and sexy about every campaign, starting out with the people that were chosen to be the face. I think that the secret recipe to staying in shape is staying in shape physically but also mentally. I'll eat the Chinese food and then the next day I'll wake up and I'll go for like an hour long walk. I felt really sexy and I thought I was gonna be thinking about so many things, you know. I'm not here, you know, or I'm not here, whatever. And once you see the pictures, you're like, dude, but that's me. I've never felt more confident now, and I feel like a woman, and I'm able to sort of wear Calvin Klein underwear and feel really like myself. I just remember my mom wearing a lot of Calvin when I was growing up, and I couldn't wait until I would, I would wear her clothes, you know? Calvin Klein underwear in one word is iconic. The Calvin Klein Envy Triangle bra is by far my favorite. They're so well made, the fabrics are super soft. They don't alter the shape, they just complement it. I like when you are able to assist your body into looking amazing 
as opposed to replace anything. And that's, a, that's exactly what the Calvin Klein Underwear Envy does. It helps you, it assists you, but it will not overshadow what you can bring naturally. And I feel like that's what Calvin Klein Underwear has been doing since the beginning. It was amazing to work with Michael Jansen because he's super sensitive, so talented, has a great eye to capture what you think you're unable to give. I never felt closed off, like I didn't want to give more of myself. I wanted them to take me wherever they thought I needed to go. It was sexy, it was creative, and the food was awesome too. <laughs>
Hi, I'm Zoe Saldana, and I'm excited for you to see my new Calvin Klein underwear campaign. And uh, here's a sneak peek behind the scenes. Hola a todos, les habla Zoe Saldana. Estoy aquí en el set de la nueva campaña de underwear de Calvin Klein. Y les voy a dar un sneak peek de lo que está pasando detrás de las cámaras. A los chicos que se van a poner uh, Calvin Klein X, marca tu... Debut in Big Sur as writer Jack Kerouac's girlfriend. He is a member of the Beatles generation, getting topless twice. Big Sur will make you big, sir. Murderer is also a serial lady. Nice sandwich. Sometimes you don't want to get fried. Introducing the charbroiled, not fried codfish sandwich. Only at Carl's Jr. and Hardy's. Eat like you mean it.